Hey everybody, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography, and today i am got a little quick tip for you on how to batch process images using Topaz Denoise or Topaz Sharpen AI. You know, as a landscape photographer, I normally process one image at a time. I don't have a lot of need for batch processing, but I recently shot an event for a museum and needed to turn around several hundred images quickly and I wanted to run it through denoise and sharpen and uh, needed to find a way to do it so I did a little research a little experimentation so I thought I'd put together a quick little video to show you how it's done in case you have a need for it you know I've been using Topaz products for quite a while now and absolutely love their products they do a great job the, they use an AI engine to analyze the image and then suggest the right model to either remove noise or sharpen the image or you can select what model to use yourself either way it works works great and they do their work without degrading the image quality and without adding a whole lot of size to an image. I know some previous denoise programs that I used to use would would drastically inflate the image size uh, with extra information and and kind of writer information and and the Topaz stuff has worked into my workflow so wonderfully that I can't imagine living without it. Now there's two different ways that you can do batch processing of images. You can either do it through Lightroom itself or through a finder or folder on your desktop. And I'll show you both ways on how to do that. So if you're in Lightroom and you have a couple of images that you want to run through, let's say Denoise, you select both images, you know, hold down the command or control key, right click on the image, edit in denoise and this is no different than it you know it going out to any other third party application outside of Lightroom so you do that I want to I want to apply these settings with any Lightroom adjustments that I've made I'll hit edit and what Lightroom does it adds a virtual copy into your Lightroom folder like it does for most things when you go to an external editor it opens up the denoise program and if you've used topaz you know that we have several different views that are available to us either the single image view or a comparison view and the comparison view shows you the four different noise reduction modes or um, models that it uses and you could you could visually choose from it if you want and what's different from, from doing single image denoise is what you see down here at the bottom of the screen, you have both images that I selected listed. And to look at the other image, all you do is click on it and it calls up the single image and it starts applying um, a noise reduction model to it. Now what you can do is, is you can select all and choose what noise reduction model you want to use. Clear, low light, severe noise. I typically use standard or clear are the two that I use the most. Rarely do I um, do I have a need for low light and severe noise, you know, both of my uh, or all of my Fujifilm cameras do a great job with noise and I really don't have a lot of severe noise in case I'm shooting at, you know, 12,800 ISO, which doesn't happen very often. Now, there's a couple ways to, to easily do this. See this little toggle switch up here? When I click that on, the computer program, Topaz Denoise AI, is choosing 
what model to use. And you can see down here, because all were selected, it's in an auto program. So when I hit apply, it's going to automatically choose the best uh, model based upon the image. Now, if I wanted to select my own model, not let the computer program choose it, but just select my own model, for this image, I would make sure that it's selected, and then I can try out clear. And notice that the toggle, the automatic toggle, uh, turned off, and then it updated the image with whatever noise setting that I wanted it to be. And you can see how down here, this model is now reflected on this line for this image. So let's say I wanted to have clear for this image, because I think that it needed a little bit more than standard. And then for the daisy image, I wanted to have standard. So I can choose which model for each image and I can go down the list and see the effects of each model on each individual image. Then when I'm ready to finalize the processing for this, I'll hit select all and I'll hit apply. And you can see how the engine's running, the noise reduction, the sharpening, and then which model, clear and standard. And because these are JPEGs, it doesn't take long, and then it returns the finished images back to me in Lightroom. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Now let's take a look at how to do this if you're working just out of a, find, a finder folder or a file folder on your desktop. So what you do is really just select the two images or all the images that you want to process. And in this case, I'll use the same two. Right click and on a Mac, it's open with Topaz Denoise. So same thing happens, the program's gonna open up and life is good. And here, you know, you have the same um, capabilities and the same functionality to choose either having the system choose what AI model or choose your own AI model for each individual image. And I want to go standard here. And we can see how that renders. These are fairly small JPEGs, and so the system renders pretty fast. I'm using a, uh, a you know four-year-old iMac that's um, fairly powerful, but still, this is a, a computational heavy program. Now here's where things get a little bit different because when we're working out of a file folder, we're not constrained by Lightroom rules and naming conventions. And so we have a little bit more flexibility working out of a file folder. So when I click Save Image, it's going to ask me do I want to do all of them because I did not check all the boxes, but it's asking me it's basically being helpful and saying, do you want to do all two? And I'm going to say yes. Now, see this dialog box? This is something that we didn't get when working out of Lightroom. And what it allows you to do is change the file name if you want. So you can either add a prefix or a suffix, something before or something after the original file name. And all you do is just type this in. Um, and you can see how it's giving you an example up here of what you might want to do, or, or what the file name is going to look like. The thing that I didn't want is I didn't want the system to append the file name with the processing model. So I would get a file name back that would say Daisy Standard or Foggy Coastline Clear. I don't want the AI model on my file names and so I typically turn this off. And then what you can do is you can specify where you want it, these saved files to go. You can send them back into the folder that you sent them to by selecting Preserve Source Directory, or you can choose a new location, 
where you want to save these images. Here's a list. I had previously done a, uh, a, a different file folder for another example, but here, you know, you just a custom saved location, choose where you want it, um, and go from there. But I want it, I want it to go back into the source directory. Just for fun for this example, I'm going to append the processing model uh, as a, with the suffix. So then you save the images and system goes through and processes everything and life is good. Bum -ba -da. And then and then it'll ask you, do you want to go back to editor? Yes. At this point you can close out of the program, which I typically do. And you can see here there's the file name with a uh, with the processing model as a suffix coastline clear so there you go there's a couple different quick and easy ways to process multiple images through topaz denoise and if you're using sharpen the same concepts apply either from lightroom or from your file folder when when sharpen ai opens you can either let the system choose what to do or you can choose exactly which model to apply and then either send the images back to lightroom or send them to a file folder depending on where you started the process so there you go folks i hope that was uh informational and informative and slightly entertaining and stay tuned for more and always subscribe, like, you know, do all that kind of good stuff down below. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.